This is a 2006 Spiker C8, and it's absolutely amazing. It's quirky, it's weird, it's fast, it's incredibly cool, it turns everyone's head. It is basically everything a supercar should be. And today I'm going to review the Spiker C8 and show you all of its quirks and features. Before I get started, big news, this Spiker C8 is currently for sale and it's being auctioned live on cars and bids. This C8 has only 3,300 miles in a manual transmission, it recently had a major service, and it's a fantastic example of the crazy Spiker. So once you finish watching this video, click the link in the description below to head over to the live auction for this Spiker C8 on cars and and bids. You can bid on it and buy it only on cars and bids. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Spiker C8 with a little overview of Spiker and this car to explain exactly what this is. So, Spiker was a Dutch car company, and their goal was to create a supercar that was as much about performance, like most supercars, as it was about special design and details and cool little touches, and that's exactly what they did. So, in terms of performance, all of these Spiker C8 models use the same V8 as the original Audi R8. So that's a 4.2 liter V8 with about 400 horsepower. And this car is rear wheel drive with a manual transmission. Now, zero to 60 was somewhere in the mid four second range, and that was great. But again, performance wasn't the entire goal of this car. The goal was to focus also on design and details. And there are some amazing ones. And so we must start with the doors. Car designers hate door handles. It's well known they stick out protruding from the door, they screw up the lines, the bodywork, designers hate them, but you can't really get rid of door handles, except this car did. You'll notice there's no obvious door handle on the outside of the Spiker C8. Instead, there's a button on the inside of the mirror housing. You can see it right here, and if you push that button, the door will pop open. It's a scissor door, just like you'd expect from a supercar, and that's how they did the door handle in this car. Just to demonstrate again, you walk up to the car, you feel back here, press behind the mirror, and the door pops up. And then you can bring it up the rest of the way and climb inside. You don't have to ruin the lines with stupid door handles. But amazingly, that's not even the coolest thing about opening this car's doors. Check this out. Let's say you walk up to this car and you don't want to go through the trouble of putting your hand behind the mirror and pressing the button. Well, you don't have to. Take the key fob, press a button on the fob, and then the door pops open automatically, so you don't even have to push the door button, which is even cooler. And speaking of the key fob, it may just be the coolest part of this whole thing because it's this. It's just this silver metal disc, a very heavy disc. I wish you could feel it. It has some real weight to it, and it has four buttons on it. You have L and R to open the left and right doors like I just showed you, and then there's a lock unlock button on the top, and then the trunk on the bottom, and that's the key fob you get with a Spiker C8. Now, what's the significance of this disc? Well, it's the Spiker logo. You can see on the back of the car, the Spiker logo has Spiker on top and then a propeller in the middle and then some Latin writing on the bottom. Then take a look at the key fob and you can see Spiker on top and the Latin writing on the bottom. Obviously, they had to ditch the propeller for the buttons, but you're basically holding the Spiker logo as a key fob, which is very cool and especially cool back in 2006 when most car companies didn't bother making their key fobs cool. Remember, the Bugatti Veyron used a key fob from the Volkswagen Passat, but Spiker wanted to do something special. And the use of the Spiker logo continues in various clever places throughout the car. For instance, on the exhaust tips, you can see Spiker on the top and the Latin writing on the bottom, integrating the Spiker logo into the exhaust tips, which is so cool. Although my very favorite use of the Spiker logo is the gas cap. You can see here, it's the whole logo, the Spiker, the Latin, and the propeller. And you twist on the propeller part of the logo in order to get 
get leverage to open the gas cap. And that is such a cool use of the logo on this car. And that's where they've integrated it. Some very cool spots. Now, in case you're wondering, and I'm sure you are, the Latin writing on the bottom of the Spiker logo translates in English to, for the tenacious, no road is impassable. <laughs> Which, uh, all right. The propeller is probably more interesting and more important to this car. The Spiker company historically, decades ago, produced airplanes. And so the propeller is integrated into the logo as sort of a historical callback to that. And there are various other aviation inspired details throughout this car, which I will show you as this review goes on. And next up, another important detail on the outside of the Spiker C8 before I go into the mini interior quirks and features. The the use of aluminum on this car is pretty impressive. A lot of aluminum and chrome trim all over the outside. And my very favorite piece is the mirror housing, which you can see is just one giant piece of curved aluminum. As a general rule, car designers hate exterior rear view mirrors even more than they hate door handles. But here they've decided to embrace it and just make it cool with this beautiful piece of aluminum. Now, the drawback is this is one full solid piece, so it can't fold in meaning you can't fold your mirrors on a spiker, but it doesn't really matter with this one anyway, because this car is so wide in back that the mirrors aren't actually the widest part of the car. Even if you folded them in, it wouldn't make the car any narrower. As you can see, the rear flared fenders are even wider than these mirrors. So why not make the mirrors look beautiful? Also worth pointing out on the outside of this car, the wheel design. Two interesting things here. For one thing, these are center lock wheels, which means they don't have any lug nuts nuts, but instead one very important center nut that's holding them in place. You often see this on race cars and more and more sports cars are embracing it, but it would have been rare 15 years ago when this car was in production to have center locks. The other important thing about these wheels is their design. They almost look like a propeller, which again recalls that aviation theme I mentioned from Spiker's logo brought into these propeller looking wheels. But nothing in this car resembles a propeller quite as much as the steering wheel, which is absolutely amazing. You can see it here really does look like a vintage airplane propeller and an amazing tie-in to the airplane motif in this car. The propeller steering wheel is probably the Spiker C8's most famous design detail, and I think it's one of the coolest steering wheels ever put in any car at any point. Now, a lot of these Spiker C8 models, especially the ones that came later, used a different steering wheel borrowed from Lamborghini and Audi that had an airbag in the middle to comply with regulations. But it was nowhere near as cool as the propeller wheel. Maybe not as safe, but millions of times cooler. Truly one of the all-time great steering wheel designs ever. But the coolness of this interior goes well beyond just the steering wheel. Before I get into all of the little details that make it so great, let's just take a general look at it. You can see stitched quilted leather and brushed aluminum on basically every surface. Gorgeous seats, gorgeous trim, gorgeous dashboard. Everything in here looks beautiful, and they didn't cheap out on anything. No crappy plastic to hide something or in a spot you might not look. Everything. Is is aluminum, leather. It's a fantastically put together interior, and it really does kind of resemble vintage aircraft, which is what they were going for. Now, like I said, there are a lot of incredibly cool details in this beautiful interior that go beyond just the steering wheel. Probably the second coolest thing in here is the shifter, which has, as you can see, exposed shift linkage, this beautiful aluminum shifter, and then the linkage goes all the way down the center console in the car. Instead of being hidden like in every other vehicle, you have it out on display, and when you're shifting, it actually moves because it's functional. This isn't just some cool piece that's there for looks. It's the actual shift linkage, and it actually moves as you move the shifter, and this is an incredibly cool spiker detail that really helps to make this interior so special. And there's so much more. In the upper part of the center control stack, you have this series of toggle switches 
is, which is not only cool, but also integrates most of the controls in this car. So stuff that a normal car might have as a button or a stock coming off the steering column here, it's these old school aviation style toggle switches. On the left, you have your wiper controls, your washer and your windshield wiper. The next three are all light controls, your headlights and then your fog lights and then your hazard lights. And then the last control here is to go into sport mode. You flip it up and you're in sport mode. And of course, each of these things has an indicator that lights up as you flip the switch and turn on whatever it is controlling. Now to the right of all of this, you have a few indicator lights like your check engine light, low fuel, that sort of thing. Instead of sticking them in a gauge cluster, they're mounted here next to the toggle switches. But the very coolest control in this upper center control stack is undoubtedly turning on the Spyker C8. You get inside this car and you have an engine start stop button, but before you can start the engine, you have to flip up this red lid and then press a toggle switch up to start the ignition. And once you've done that, you can press the start stop button and the car will turn on. And that is so cool. Again, reminds you of a vintage aircraft, old school. Of course, they could have made it easier and you just press the start stop button, but where is the beauty and the detail in that? And I just love it. Now, also in this upper center control stack area, as you can see, a few gauges here, water temperature, oil temp and pressure, and your fuel gauge all integrated into this area. But anyway, moving on from that and down further into the center control stack, into this lower middle part, you can see more important items in here. On the top of this lower part, you have, again, several different indicators. These will show like temperature warning, ABS warning, seat belt, that sort of thing. Those are important to have. And right below that, you have all of your climate controls. Now, the big two dials you can see adjust your temperature and your fan speed. And of course, they're very cool. For one thing, aluminum, and they have the Spiker logo in the center. And you don't just press some buttons to get to a certain temperature degree that you want. Instead, you twist this dial and it goes from blue to red. And that's how you let the car know if you want hot air or cold air. And that's just really cool. Now, over on the right side, your fan speed dial is about the same. You twist this aluminum dial, it's gorgeous, and that adjusts your fan speed. And you can see little lines that come out to bring it from minimum to maximum corresponding with your twisting. Now, below all of that, you have, for the rest of the climate controls, more toggle switches. Turn on your air conditioner, your defroster, switch where you have the air come out, all toggle switches in the center. None of the controls in this car are traditional or typical or boring. Everything is special and beautiful. And by the way, on that subject, and speaking of the climate controls in this car, the climate vents are propellers. As you can see, little climate vent looks just like a propeller in motion. Very cool. You got that over on the driver's side as well. The climate vent propellers. Again, all about the details in the C8. But anyway, moving on to the rest of the gauges and controls in this car, one item that is exactly where you'd expect it is the turn signal stock. Over to the left of the steering wheel, you push it down, up to turn on the turn signal. It is beautiful, but its operation is pretty standard. Now, to the right side of the steering column, you also have another other stock coming off, and this controls the brights, the bright lights, the high beams. You push it down to flash the high beams, or you push it up in order to just keep them on. Those are your column stocks. Now behind that, you have your gauge cluster, and actually the main gauges, speedometer and tachometer, aren't really that unusual in this car. They use kind of a boring font. They don't really look all that amazing, but they are rimmed in aluminum and easy to read like you might expect. And over to the left of those main gauges, you have a clock that tells you the time. Now, a much more interesting item in this vicinity is the window switches. You can find them here mounted on the door panel. And once again, they are toggles, which is actually really cool. You press it, the window goes down. Far more exciting than pressing the window switch in a standard car. Again, everything in this car is beautiful and special. They didn't settle for any typical controls anywhere. But to discuss the window switches, we must next discuss the windows in this car, which are very unusual. Now, as you can see, this is an open roof car. It was offered with a convertible top. And this car still has its convertible top and comes with its convertible top, but you would never really want to use it. It's unwieldy and putting it on is an annoying, slow process. You really want to drive around with this car open and only use the top if you absolutely have to in an emergency. But driving around with this car open puts a whole new meaning to the term open because this car is far more exposed 
closed than basically any other convertible. The main reason for that is there's no frames around the glass. So you just have glass and then it stops. There's no frame over the windshield even, let alone the side windows, no frames at all. You're just completely open and exposed to the world driving this car. In fact, you don't even have sun visors in this car, none at all. They're not mounted on the windshield. There's no frame to put them on, so there's no sun visors. You're just one with the elements, the sun, the sky, as you drive around in the Spyker C8. Now, the result of this is you can't really put the side windows down all the way because part of the side windows actually acts as a frame for the other part that rolls down. So you can roll down this little central part, as you can see, that goes down and up on both sides, but the rest of the window is fixed in place. Now, you might think a fixed window like this would rob you of that open feel in a convertible, but it absolutely doesn't. This is one of the most open feeling convertibles I have ever driven. But anyway, other interesting things in this interior, on the driver's side door panel below the window switches, you have the mirror control, which again is cool and special and aluminum, works like you'd expect, but looks better. Over on the passenger side of the interior, you have the glove box, which is kind of interesting. To open it, you pull this aluminum latch and then this quilted leather glove box opens, but not down like in most cars, it comes toward you, as you can see, which is a little bit odd. Now, inside the glove box, if you look carefully kind of up to the right, you see a keyhole, and that's for the spare key. Just in case that silver disc key that I showed you earlier fails to be recognized by the car, you have this spare key, which looks like a traditional Audi R8 key, since it shares the powertrain, and you can stick that in here and start the car in an emergency if your regular key isn't working. Also interesting to note in the passenger area of the Spyker C8, the parking brake is mounted in the passenger footwell. There wasn't really space anywhere else, I guess, so this is where the parking brake is located. Certainly an odd decision. And by the way, in case you were wondering, the shift lever, to get it into reverse, you push down on a button on the top of the shift lever. Push it down and then move it all the way over to the left and then up, and that's how you engage reverse. The button is the lockout. You can't get into reverse without it. Now, as for door handles in the Spyker C8, you can see them here. They look like normal car door handles, but flipped upside down. I guess that's to help you open the door and push it upwards in one motion. Now, interestingly, this car actually comes with three door handles, one for each door, of course, but then there's a third one in the driver door jam, as you can see, and that opens the rear compartment. Pull it, and then the rear compartment is open so we can go check it out. So let's talk rear compartment. As you can see with the rear lid open, there are two components back here. In the middle, further forward in the rear compartment, you have the engine. And like I said, this is the same 4.2 liter V8 from the original Audi R8, about 400 horsepower, but you wouldn't know it was an Audi engine from looking at it. There's no visibly obvious Audi logos, and they've put these metal Spiker branded covers on the sides of the engine to make it look more spikery. But Audi powertrain it is indeed. Now, interestingly, this engine looks pretty wedged in here and like it might be difficult to access if you want to do repair work, but at least it's an Audi R8 powertrain and not some bespoke engine specially designed for this car that will undoubtedly be impossible to find parts for as this car ages. The R8 engine should be pretty easy to find parts for years to come, and I think that's a nice benefit to the C8. Now, the other component in this rear area, you have the trunk, and as you can see, it is lined in stitched quilted leather. Even the trunk is a high quality luxury item in the Spiker. The trunk is pretty large, as you can see, pretty wide, but not very deep. So maybe you can't stick giant items back here in case you wanna to try to use your Spiker as a practical car. And since we're back here talking about storage, I should mention a few interesting things that come with this particular Spiker C8. One is this book which shows like pictures of other Spiker C8s. I guess when you bought one of these, they gave you the book and maybe you felt a little bit cooler. This car also comes with some service records here, as you can see, but more interesting are the next three items. One is this guide to putting on the soft top. It is hilariously long with detailed photos and it gives a 14 step process for how to put on the soft top in this car. Like I said, it's there, but you'll never really want 
want to use it. Now, I also like the owner's manual, which is in this silver little binder. Nothing particularly cool or interesting inside the owner's manual, but I love the silver exterior, kind of ties in with the aluminum trim in the car. And I especially love that on the spine of the owner's manual, it doesn't say Spiker C8 or owner's manual. Instead, it says Spiker owner, presumably because they figured you would stick that on a bookshelf and you could flex. People would look at that and see, wow, you're a Spiker owner, how cool. Now, also included with this car is the original window sticker, which is very cool to see. The base price of a Spiker C8 was $270,000 back in 2006, but this one had a sticker price of just under $300,000, so it had around 30 grand in options, and there are some interesting ones. One is Whisper Mode, which cost $1,000 extra. That added a valved exhaust, so it wasn't always loud when you started up the car and you could whisper around if you wanted to. Another interesting option here is the quilted leather trim, almost $3,300 extra. I've been pointing it out in the interior and in the trunk. It's beautiful and it was pricey. Also pricey was these wheels. They called them aeroblade wheels, again to mimic the look of something on an aircraft and they were $6,500 extra. Big money, but they do look cool. But Undoubtedly, the coolest option on this Spiker's option list was the wide body specification. That was $6,500 extra. And I mentioned earlier, the body in this car sticks out even wider than the mirrors, and that looks so mean, this wide body in back. Well, that was an expensive option. Most of these Spiker C8s came with the narrow body. The wide body is way cooler, and it was more expensive. And finally, we move on to the front compartment in the Spiker, which you can see is open right now. In order to open it, there's a little latch in the driver footwell. In fact, there's an icon that tells you roughly where the latch is. You go behind that, you pull, and then it unlatches the front compartment. You walk up here and you can pretty easily lift it up. Doesn't take extra effort or extra unlatching. It just folds right open and you can see in front. Now, no storage compartment in here. All of your trunk space is in back, I already showed you, but you do have a few interesting items up front. One is the inboard suspension, as you can see, pretty cool, pretty special. Something you don't often see except on the very coolest performance cars. Also interesting under here, you have well, it looks like a little box that's kept in place with a leather strap. So what exactly is that? Well, it's the toolkit. You open it up and you can see all of the tools that come with your spiker. So you got some Allen wrenches, you got a screwdriver, you got pliers, bulbs, fuses, you even have a flashlight. All of this stuff goes along with your spiker C8 and your front mounted toolkit. Also interesting up here, you can see this switch marked on or off. This is a battery battery cutoff switch. So if you don't plan to drive the car for a while and you don't want the battery to drain while it's sitting, just flip it off and the battery won't drain. A pretty good feature to have if you have a supercar, you're probably not using it all that often. You can just turn off the battery when it's parked. All right, driving the Spiker C8. This is so cool. Now, I reviewed one of these a long time ago, over five years ago, in fact, but my format was different and I didn't get as in-depth and blah, blah, blah. I felt like it was time for a refresher and who's gonna turn down the chance to review a Spiker or watch a Spiker review? All right, first thing you notice about being in this car and what I remember from the last time I drove it, you're just so exposed. With the roof off, which is how these cars always are because the roof is silly, with the roof off, I mean, the, the wind, the glass stops and there's no like rim or anything. You're just like open to the world in this car. And so you just feel so, it's way more exposed and open than in any other convertible that you're ever gonna drive. There's not even a rim to the windshield. You're just basically there out in the world. Now, the other thing you'll notice, and rather quickly when driving this car, um, and it's important because I think a lot of people are intimidated by the Spiker because of the way it looks and the way its interior is and how rare they are but it's actually pretty easy to drive. At the end of the day, this car uses the powertrain from an Audi R8, and that was a very good engine. It was also in the RS4. It's just a very good usable engine. It's not like a lot of supercar engines that are peaky, that are finicky, that are difficult to deal with, blah, blah, blah. This car, it's a, it's a simple clutch. It is a very nice gear lever. Uh, gear shift action feels so, so good. Smooth, quick, easy, everything is no problem at all. It really does like feel easy to drive. This car is not intimidating like you might expect. 
And I think that's one reason why spiker values are probably going to stay pretty strong because the car is just usable, it's drivable, and, and, and history has shown the market rewards supercars like that. This car is also just cool. Um, you occasionally hear people say, oh, the Spyker is just a rebodied Audi R8. I mean, it's so far from that. Yes, it shares the powertrain, which I think is actually a good thing. The R8's got a great powertrain, um, known for pretty good reliability. Why not just use that? It's got good power. It's a known entity. Parts and service are always going to be available. But it's more than just a rebodied R8 when you drive it. The interior is so cool. And again, this feeling of openness is unlike anything you're gonna get in an R8 or any other car for that matter. When you drive this car, you feel special. It feels special. Whereas an R8 over time starts to kind of feel like a car, this feels like a truly different special driving experience. This thing's just awesome. It's just plain cool. It also gives you an amazing opportunity to combine usable and special, which is hard to do. That's one of the things I love most about my Ford GT. It's both special and usable, and that's true in this case as well. Now, this car does get a lot of looks from a lot of people. The design is crazy and like nothing most people have seen, and then just the sheer openness. I generally find that convertibles get more attention uh, than any other vehicle, because the person is just right there. But then this is just so open, it's just such a roadster that it gets even more. Oh. This is so cool. And honestly, honestly, it sounds good. I mean, that R8 powertrain, again, has always been a good powertrain. People have always loved it. And it's much more reliable than Audi's other 4.2 liter V8. This car is just so damn cool. Driving around, just the sheer openness, and you look around this interior, and you're just in a total alien vehicle. It is so exciting. Really, this car just feels so special. I'm amazed at just how special it feels. I think it's awesome. Um, I'm into it a lot more than I expected to be. You know, like I said, I drove it a few years ago. Um, but that was five plus years ago, and I, I just didn't have the context. I hadn't driven as many other cars. And now that I've driven a lot of special cars, I really think this one is quite special. I just love cars that are both iconic and usable. So many cars, like the Countach, iconic car, but it's impossible to use it. This one is just fun and awesome and easy to drive. Great shifter, great clutch. It's just a shame Spiker's gone and can't follow this up with like more cars that sort of solidify this car's iconic status. But for enthusiasts, everybody knows this car and everybody thinks it's cool and its legend is only growing. And so that's the Spiker C8. This car is amazing. It's fun to drive. It is loaded with quirks and features, and it's getting more interest and recognition among car enthusiasts. This is a real supercar in the true sense of the word, and I'm thrilled I had the chance to review it. And you can buy it on Cars and Bids. Anyway, now it's time to give the Spiker C8 a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 62 out of 100, which places the Spiker C8 here against some other cool cars from this era. The C8 really has it all. It's gorgeous, it's incredibly cool, it's rare, it drives well, and it's relatively reliable thanks to the Audi R8 drivetrain. I also adore all the amazing, quirky details this car has, and I think this is truly one of the coolest cars on the planet, especially for the money. That's reflected in the Doug score, where it finishes just behind some heavy hitters like the Mercedes S. LR and the Lamborghini Murcielago LP640. This car really is on that level.